Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, the RPG Maitre D, here to answer your gaming and game night questions, striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. The question I'm answering today is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is the new Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Starter Set. This is a new beginner box intro box for the fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Now, full disclosure, I am a Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay fanboy and have been since the late 80s. I love Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay sec uh, first edition. I ran more sessions of that than probably any other game, ran it all the way through high school into university. I also played second edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, which I enjoyed, but I felt it missed some of the flavor of the first edition. I then moved on to the third edition, which I'm going to lose all the Warhammer fans by saying I really liked third edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. They used a very different system. It was something unique and different. It was Fantasy Flight games that used their Genesis system before it was the Genesis system. Me and my group loved it. Well, what I have here is the fourth edition. I have not played the fourth edition. I have not seen this box set, but what I have heard is this goes back to the roots. It's back to the D100 percentile based system and some of the humor and grimness of the original first edition Warhammer. So I'm really looking forward to going back to the original Warhammer after enjoying the later editions. So I have not looked at what's in this box. I haven't even read the table of contents. I got this as a gift for Christmas, and I've been itching to open it up, even though I know it'll probably be a while before I actually get to play it. So you're going to get to discover what's in this box at the same time as me. Let's get to it. All right, here you go. The new Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay starter set from Cubicle 7, licensed from Games Workshop. And it says, take your first steps into a grim world of perilous adventure. That's always been the tagline. I got to say, this cover art right away has me interested. I dig it. I see a priest of Sigmar. I see a witch hunter. Of course, there's a troll slayer, something shady going on in the background. It's set in a city, which is something I always found set Warhammer apart from other fantasy role-playing games. Not a lot of dungeons in the Warhammer world. It's more about the political intrigue and city politics. So we start off with the GM screen, I guess. Yes, interesting. This is the second time I've seen this recently, and I can't remember if the other game was Cubicle 7, but using the inside of the box is like a, a DM screen. I dig it. People get to see this back, the, the front cover, and then you've got a, a, a short reference for some of the tables that are in the game and stuff. Cool. I like that. And we have, uh, they gotta be Q Workshop dice. Uh, well, they're pretty. I don't know about these. That is not that easy to read. It's not terrible. Like, I like... I like shiny dice, but I also really like being able to read my dice at a quick glance. So you get a couple 2d10 dice, but they're very, very busy dice. That would be a 97. Wow. Okay, maybe I don't want to play Warhammer with these dice either. There we go, a 17. They're shiny, they're pretty, but that those are not clear to read. Those would be hard to cross the table. Not a huge fan of these. I'm sorry to say. I, I would much rather have just a nice set of easy to read dice. Uh, especially from across the table. Not that I don't trust my players, but I do like to see what rolls have been made. Especially that, like that. It took, takes me to get to about here before I can read it, and I am literally less than a foot away from the camera at that point. Okay, then. Prepare to enter a grim world of Ferris Adventure. Read this first. Is this all packaged together? Let's see. Yes, okay. Oh, not quite. All right, so there's a huge pack here. Interesting packing material, way to do it. I'm actually, it says read this first, but I'm gonna put it aside. We have some various tokens in different colors. Uh, it's really hard to tell the colors apart. So like that purple and that blue are really close together. I hope that's not overly important. I'm hoping it's just different colors for different players. Um, they just look like silver coins on the other side. I'm gonna guess these are fate tokens because I know fate is something that came back and they're just in different player colors. If it's not that, I'm a little concerned by how similar some of these colors look. Like that green and that brown are really close together. The green and the blue aren't next to each other, but are close, and this purple and this white. The white's clear. There's more white than anything else. Then we have a odd map of the old world. So the odd part is that it looks folded, but it's a picture. It's like they forgot to get the creases out of their map when they printed it inside. Maybe it's just supposed to look like a folded up map. Um, looks like we're sticking with the Uber's Reek area, uh, which is what the third edition and second edition did, which moved away. So we've got an area of the old world here. All right, let's see what they're hiding. 
in this packet. You know what? I'm just gonna move this right off the table for now. Even though, yeah, this is resealable. I don't think I'm gonna bother keeping it real sealable. So here we go. Hope no one considers this spoilers, because I'm gonna crack this open. It's a prayer to enter a Grim World Perilous Adventure. Read this first. Interesting. What an odd, odd style. Like with these odd fold outs. It tells you what you get in the box, what is Warhammer. Uh, those are advantage tokens, so not fate. I guess I guess there's a new rule. Showing that you're gonna have dice, the book one. So this kind of tells you what to look at next. It does talk about what's a role-playing game. I do dig this a nice Warhammer art down at the bottom. It, sorry, Warhammer art. It's uh, people playing. I like that. That's pretty cool. With the troll slayer and stuff. I dig that image. Got some diversity there, which is always good. And then we have Salundra von Darkenberg overview. So these are your character folders. Again, sticking with this weird fold-out thing. It's different. That looks like a Warhammer character sheet. You've got, wow, okay, it looks like you're going to have a lot more skills and you have ratings and skills. So unlike the first edition of Warhammer, you are not just you have Haggle, you have whatever. You have actually ratings and skills. I see talents. Um, your stats are, again, weapon skill, blitz skill, strength, toughness, initiative, agility, dexterity, intelligence, willpower, and fellowship. That sounds about right. I don't think anything's different from there. Um, looks like your armor is even the same. The armor points have looks, looks like, like one in each area. You've got trappings, that's about the same. I like this, so they've got the, the explanation of the character sheet here, and then your character background here. So there's obviously there's motivation, secrets, initial wealth. That's a lot more modern than we saw in the original Warhammer. Anything on the back here? No, oh, just a picture. So here's a great way to toss out the characters. Like, hey, pick a character. I love that hat. I've always been impressed. So then we have Garner Hrolfsson. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do is, I don't wanna spoil these characters, I'll just flip to the back. We have our, our pretty typical, uh, note it says Dwarf Slayer, which sounds funny. Uh, isn't it a Troll Slayer, not a Dwarf Slayer? Wouldn't a Dwarf Slayer be something else? Looks like a Halfling, so we still have Halflings in, um, yeah, they're called Halflings in Warhammer. I had to think for a second. Halfling Thief, pretty traditional. There we go, Human Wizard. I love it, because it's a wizard of uh, is at the Amethyst College, I think, which is the College of Death. I have always enjoyed the colors of magic in Warhammer. That was something added with Realms of Sorcery, something that wasn't in the original rulebook. I dig it. I really dig it. And it's a Gruber. I wonder if that's tied to some of the previous modules. Hans Gruber is a very well-known Warhammer character. I dig it. I love it that they didn't just give you a bright wizard. Lots of characters here. High Elf Merchant, so you got to throw in a couple of uh, the different types. I wonder if you get a rat catcher. Rat catcher would be nice. Nope, oh, witch hunter. I've always loved witch hunters. Nice. Oh, nice city map. It's nice and thick. I dig that. Uh, yeah, Ubersreek. See, we're in the Ubersreek area. This is like the new area that everyone seems to love. I, the text's a little small there. Just just a little. I don't even know if I can get that in focus. But I dig it. Um, then we have the Ubersreek. This is the Ubersreek duchy area of the old world. We have other maps. I always like these maps. Oh, so this might be like the player version and the and the DM version. I'm not sure. Because if you look, these are the same cities with different details. I love the thickness here. Attribute, and butte, and skill reference sheet. These are cool. Combat reference sheet, conditions reference sheet. So instead of a DM screen, you've got these reference sheets that would be easy to pass around. Again, nice, thick. Um, the combat, someone got a little stuff on it. Uh, the conditions, sorry. I dig this. I like it. Here's the adventure book with uh, Uber's Reek on the cover. I don't want to go, uh, I don't want to spoil anything here. So we're going to flip to the end. There's the critical hit table. Looks a little more complicated than the original. Dramatic test outcomes fit table. We are looking at, I see mutations. It's definitely worth 47? Yeah. 41. 41 pages of adventure. Uh, nope, this is soft cover. And it's just a paper cover, but it is nice, colorful. Lots of artwork inside. I don't want to spoil anything. This is the adventure book, so I'm just kind of flipping through quickly. Looks great. Uh, I love the fact that there's references on the back. Now, this is a thick book. There's your guide to Uber's Reek. And like I said, this has been a thing since second edition. They like to set Warhammer in the Uber's Reek area. 
part of the Warhammer world that's always been best, or part of every Warhammer game that's always been amazing to me is the background and setting. So here you have a really thick setting book, including stats for NPCs, various places to have adventures. And again, this is a Warhammer, so you're looking at mainly city adventures. So here's your city. Uh, this one's a nice whopping 64 pages. This looks like the kind of thing that if, unless it's included in the core rulebook, might make this box set worth picking up, even if you already own Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition. Then we have handouts. We're going to skip past those quickly. And advertising for video games, oddly. Oh, and um, scenarios. What would be interesting is it, it's saying continue adventures with rough hard nights and hard days, which is reference to two classic modules. Um, it's not saying go buy the core rule book. So that's interesting. It looks like you might be able to take these pregens into this first set of adventures. That's cool. No miniatures, no standees, uh, no tactical maps, which honestly is to be expected. Warhammer has never really been a tactical uh, style role-playing game. Lots of background information, a rather thick adventure book, some nice player handouts and reference cards. This all looks great. Nothing to complain about here. I had no idea what to expect when opening the box. My only real disappointment here, this funky system's weird. It's odd. I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just different. Is this? Here's my only complaint. I would prefer much more readable dice. It's awesome you gave me 2d10, but... So what I get? Oh, 50. 55. I honestly could not tell that was a 50. You know what, it actually, I swear it looks better on camera than it does to my eyes. Because you can kind of see the halo of white around it, whereas if I pick this up, I see the shield way more than I see the other. Oddly thick box, mainly because of these dice. If they didn't have the dice, then I don't think you would need uh, as quite as deep a box. This is odd to have this compared to um, with the reference sheets for a DM screen, but it is interesting that I'm seeing more and more publishers use the inside of the box for their games. There you go, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Starter Set. This is the fourth edition from Cubicle 7. All right. Warhammer fan to me just geeked out for a while. I probably spent more than I needed to showing off some of those components and talking about the Warhammer world. But uh, too bad. I like Warhammer. It's going to happen. This looks good. It looks like the Warhammer I, I remember. Obviously, there are some changes. Skills look like they're more complicated. Um, but I'm not here to rate the game. I'm here to talk about the components. And I got to say, it's a mixed bag. Um, it's a of 2D10 dice that are difficult to read, especially from across the table. Not a fan of that. Tokens that have colors on them that are almost identical. I'm not a fan of that either, though I do like that there's tokens. The rest, though, look good. Um, there were player handouts. There were various maps. I was really impressed by the thickness of the maps and player handouts. I expected paper, and there were thin cards. So that's a bonus. I was really hoping for a big fold-out overland map. That's just something I'm used to seeing in starter sets. It's a little disappointed I didn't see that. Um, I, this is also not quite playable out of the box, despite that's what it says, because you're going to need writing implements for one. Plus, you're going to be sharing those dice, which would be kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I know it's not a big deal, and some people don't care, but I like to see pencils with my games. Give me some nice pencils that say Warhammer, or have the Chaos Gods on them or something. But again, that's me. That's not everyone. What you won't find is miniatures, tactical maps, grid scenery. That is not what Warhammer is all about. You are looking at a thick book of background information, a set of rules for how to play, and a bunch of sample characters. Pretty much what to expect. It looks like multiple adventures, and it does look like you may be able to go right from this box to the first set of adventures instead of having to buy the nice thick core rulebook. Overall, a little bit of a mixed bag, but it's still got me excited. I love Warhammer. I want to see what they've done with the system. What has Cubicle 7 done? What have they done to improve the system to make a system I love better? This looks like a great box to find that out, so I am looking forward to playing it. To learn about what I did think about this, the best place you can go is tabletopbellhop.com or follow me on social media as Tabletop Bellhop, all over the place, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, wherever. When I finally get this to the table, that's where I'm going to be talking about it, and eventually I'll be publishing a full review on YouTube and on the blog. Now, fair warning, that might be a bit because we're still not back to regular gaming and role-playing yet, but when it does happen, I am looking forward to checking this out. So again, I am Motusen of the Tabletop Bellhop. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. Watch out for the rumors of over-large rats in the sewers. 
I have a feeling they're not as unfounded as the watch might be telling you. Good day and game on.